Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited this morning to be bringing you God's truth. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, revelations are coming out of your mouth to us right now. And we receive every one of it that we may live. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now let's let's see how we round this off and um, trust God for his wisdom. So now we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Turn your Bibles there right now and get your notes right down. The thoughts that are coming to your heart as you uh, listen to this thing. So we, we stopped at verse 57 yesterday. It says, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is Jesus. See, it is Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. God gives us the victory. How does he give us the victory? Through Jesus. Now, what does that mean? The, the, the victory has been given to us already by God. But how do you assess the victory? It is Jesus who will physically give it to you. So that's why Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So anyone who doesn't know Jesus cannot get this victory. I don't say knowing Jesus because he went out for the altar call. Do you know him? Him. See, you may know the president of your country because you know his face, you know his picture when you see it. When he's talking on the, the radio, you know that is the president's voice. But you don't, this doesn't mean you know him. There are those whom you, you still meet and say, yeah, I know the president. Say, yeah, I always say, that guy, he knows the president. What, what do you mean by that? That guy has access. He can go meet the president and get anything he wants to get from him. See, that's how it works. So do you know Jesus, that kind of knowledge? Do you know him enough that you can go to him and get what you want? He, that is how he gives life. He doesn't give life by proxy. Jesus doesn't give life by proxy. No, 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 no. It is the words that I speak unto you. That's why it says, man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you can receive the mouth, the word from the mouth of God, then you live. See? No third party in this matter. No middle man. Praise God. So, so that's how we get the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this last verse in verse 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Think about this. What an encouragement. He says, don't, be, don't allow anything to move. Be steadfast. See, unmovable. Don't be moved. The things that you have believed, don't shift from it. Don't. Don't. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your labor is not in vain. What a joy. What a joy to know that. Wow. You know, for example, like I told you something. I said, I said, then. You know, 1999, when, when I made up my mind for these things, I began to see miracles. See? Oh, yeah. I saw miracles of healing, first of all, in my physical body. And now, guess what? That, that labor I labored in him is paying off today. See? I remember before then, every year, I, you know, you, you just... You just Expect it to happen. Typhoid must. I must. I must be admitted in the hospital for typhoid. I remember growing up like that. Times in the hospital. You know. I remember those days. But guess what? It's gone since that day. So what? Your labor is not in vain. In the Lord. Listen, the labor that will not be in vain is the labor that was done in the Lord, not the labor outside the Lord. If you do your laboring outside the Lord, it may be in vain. 
But if it is in the Lord, what do you mean in the Lord? When you are waiting for the Lord to teach you and to guide you and not, not what man is saying to you. No, 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 no. I remember then, you know, but I was in school. I was still a student then. And this, you, know, I, you know those days, I don't know what is happening to this generation. You know, sometimes I, I just want to visit them and, and find out what, 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 what are they paying attention to these days. You know, then when we were in school, if you don't have a Dix Bible, you've not started as a Christian, as a believer, not pastor, as a believer. If you don't have a Dix Bible, you're not serious. Then, I mean, that, I mean everybody, you know, you're going, for, you're going for fellowship, you just can't, you know, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a labor we were laboring. We were concerned about the word. And I remember then finding out things in the scriptures. I was saying miracles of provision. I made up my mind. I remember, you know, then I said, look, how do I apply these things to myself? I want to see God meet my needs. Now, because I wasn't so broke, you know, there are people who were too broke, nothing to look, nothing. At least God helped my parents. They were able to see me through school. Not, not beggarly, no, no. God, God really helped us. But you see, I still wanted to apply the principle like a poor man. See? So I, I sat down thinking of how do I apply this thing. Then I made up my mind. Then I said, okay, you know what? From now on, every money I receive as my pocket money for school, it will not get to school with me. I will sow it as a seed. And I'm going to go to school empty. And let me test the word of God and see it work in my life. And I began to do that. And bro brothers and sisters, I also began to see miracles like I have never imagined before. And guess what? Till this day, that, that's my foundation. So till this day, I enjoy rest where, where meeting my needs is concerned. I enjoy so much rest. But see, that was the laboring days. The fear. Hmm, what if does this doesn't happen? What if, what if, what if? The fear was there. But it was also a labor. So when he says your reward, your labor is not in vain in the Lord, I, I can tell you I know what I'm talking about, what he's talking about here. Glory to God. Let's go into the next chapter, chapter 16. And I was trusting God will finish this first Corinthians this week. Praise God. Now, chapter 16. Oh, and this is the last chapter in first Corinthians. Has it been awesome? I want to hear from you. Praise God. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatians, even so do ye. So, so now you, you are seeing here now that this letter was actually written after the book of Galatians was written. See? But now, when, when you follow the Bible, you see Galatians is after this. But now he's, he's referring to what he commanded to the Galatian church. All right. It says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God had prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Now, I want you to notice this. He said, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God had prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. So, I don't want to come and start taking offerings. Now, he saying concerning collection for the saints. Now, what does that mean? That means every church outside of Jerusalem, they were, they were still... Uh, they, they, they remember the saints in Jerusalem because of the persecution that was going on then. So they used to take offerings for the saints in Jerusalem. Do you get that? So he said, all right, now it's good you're, you're thinking of doing that. But this is a let there be order. Remember, he taught them to do everything in order. So let there be order. And I said, for the first week, they should gather so that the gathering must have been done before I come. So now when I come, it's not be like I'm trying to raise money. No, no, you want to give, fine, give. But this is how it should be done. All right, then. 
And that says, that there be no gathering when I come. Paul says, when I come, I don't want to raise offering. But now we call preachers to come to our church to raise offering. Mm. Praise God. <laughs> just, just to think. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letter, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Did you see that when I come? And so this is how much we've raised for the saints in Jerusalem. All right, so who are we sending? Okay, we send Brother Joseph. Brother Joseph is a good man. He will not eat our money. Oh, praise God. So you now send Brother. You said, well, if, if, if I'm going also, then we'll go together. So Paul is even saying, I don't want to take your money from you and say I'm taking it. No, one of you will follow me so that you will see. You see accountability that Paul was speaking of. Did you see that? Paul was being accountable to them. So don't think that we say, oh, saints. You know, sometimes, for example, you know, you, you, even in our nation, Nigeria, you know, many, many Christians in the north are facing persecution. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And then there are, there are ministries that are over there. And it would just be right for other Christians to say, oh, what, what can we do? And they say, oh, let's get. But, you know, also there are people who set up such, you know, things because they want to raise money for themselves so they they use the situation to enrich themselves now paul is that's why paul was being uh, transparent here say look that's why he says when and when i come whomsoever ye shall approve by your letter them will i send to bring your liberty to jerusalem and if it be me that i go also they shall go with me now i will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now, by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permits. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. He's just telling them his journey now. For a door... For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries, just like it happens to every one of us. Now, if Timothy has come, see that ye that he may be with you without fear, for he walketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Now he's recommending Timothy. Tell if, if Timothy comes, take care of him, because he's doing the work as I am doing the work. Now that's what, what, what they do to one another. Praise God. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me. For I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desire him to come unto you with the brethren. But his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. See, they were ministering together as a team. And so they asked, oh, Apollos. Now, you remember in, in, in chapter 3, there was this argument. How come you, some of you are saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. Now, Apollos had ministered in Corinth. And he did so well. So some people are, me, I'm Apollos' disciple. Me, I'm Paul's disciple. Paul said, no, nonsense. You are carnal to be saying that. So now he's saying, look, concerning Apollos, I wanted him to come to you, you know. But, but this time is not convenient for him. He has other administration to do elsewhere. So he said, but I'm sure he will come to you in a coming, just like we do today. Oh, oh wow, you know, you know, your pastor is thinking of which minister will be a blessing to you. See, which is a good thing. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men. Be strong. Say, so don't, 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 don't be feeble like men, men. Be strong. Praise God. And that's what I want to say to you today. Be strong. Say, watch. Stand fast in the faith. Don't let anything shake you. Be strong. And the Lord will help you. Because my time is up. Praise God. Ha! Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to round this up tomorrow. And trust that the Lord will bring abundant blessing to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.